Well, growing up, I was a typical athlete. Um, growing up in a very poor area, um, Canada's first project, Regent Park. Uh, we're born in Toronto, uh, live in Toronto, and uh, very, very, very bad area. Um, you're either a drug dealer or you're an athlete. It was just one or the other. There was no in between. So my mother was a very young mother, had four kids um, at a very young age, and uh, she is definitely the fighter in the family that uh, she instilled through all of us. My first amateur fight, it was against a guy named Radic Radislav. He was 6'5", 245 pounds, and I was uh, 6 feet, 206 pounds to be exact. He was just so much bigger than me that every time I would block or parry, he, he would hurt me. It was just too much weight behind his punches. And um, I pulled it out. I mean, it was, uh, it was a dog fight. Um, you know, I end up uh, knocking him out in the third round. And that's all I can remember. And uh, after the fight, I just remember I wasn't able to train for a good three weeks. Uh, I had a really bad rotator cuff uh, shoulder uh, injury and um, I couldn't walk straight. I couldn't do anything. I was a wreck. And after that, um, I told myself that, you know, if I could put myself in a do or die situation every time I step in the ring, I'll be the best one day. And that's what I'm striving to do. So that first amateur fight was huge for me. I met Sid in 2009. I told him that I'd like to train with him. Uh, he wasn't interested at all. He actually said uh, he didn't have the time. I asked him why. He said, well, you know, I like to get into the promotional side of boxing. Fighters are a headache. Fighters are... Uh, you can't rely on them. Uh, they should turn up one day and the next day they're not here. I said, I understand that, but it's not my mentality. Um, I'm a fighter. If I'm going to fight and do this, I, I will be here every day. He said, well, I'm still not interested, but um, you can get a membership, basically. So I was like, fine. You know, I got a membership. I would travel from Brampton to Kitchener every single day to train about six days a week. I would train and Sid would walk by the gym and he would just take note of me, and just keep walking out, wouldn't say anything to me. For two weeks, two weeks went by, I was doing the same thing. A month goes by, Sid's not saying anything to me. I'm just training, training, training. And then almost two months uh, into the same routine over and over, I said, Sid, you gotta train me, man. I'm here to stay, I'm gonna do it. And at that time he said, okay, you know what? Let's do it. We've always heard that you have to sacrifice for the things that you want in life. But a lot of people say that and not really understand what that means. Uh, for me, I've sacrificed a whole lot. I've sacrificed my friends. I've sacrificed relationships. I've sacrificed my family. And uh, I'm a very close, loving person with my family. I'm very, very family oriented. and. I've sacrificed a lot of time to, to spend with them. It hurts every day. I miss my family every day, um, especially my mother. We're so close. She lives not too far from me and I hardly see her, um, which is like, I would, I mean, I would never recommend it for anybody, but uh, she understands because she knows what I'm doing. Um, I put my effort into my craft and, you know, try to become the best fighter that I can be. In the future, um, I need to be world <laughs> world champion. Uh, there's no other way. When I got into boxing, I never just wanted to be another fighter, another good fighter or anything like that. It was about being a champion fighter. I am now a champion fighter, two-time champion, uh, North American champion, and to be world champion is everything uh, to me because I've sacrificed so much. Um, to get to where I am now and, I've sacri and I'm going to sacrifice more uh, until I become a uh, world champion. So that is the goal, that's all I see, that's the vision, um, that's everything.